After Door County's first settlers cleared the land for its timber, they discovered that the soil wasn't suitable for most crops. But in 1862, Swiss immigrant Joseph Zettel planted the first orchard in Door County. It was an apple orchard, and it flourished. Thirty years later, Door County's ideal fruit growing conditions caught the attention of other Wisconsin fruit growers and the University of Wisconsin's horticulture department. Their trials in growing fruit in the county included experiments with apples, plums, and pears. But their ultimate success was proven in 1896 when three acres of tart cherries were planted. It exceeded their expectations, and within 50 years, Door County would annually harvest 10% of all cherries grown in the United States. For farming, this isn't the best soil. It's all rocky. And the biggest reason, the biggest reason they're growing up here in Door County is we have the longest frost-free period. It takes forever for spring to get to Door County. With water on three sides of us here, really helps to hold the, the crop back in the spring. And then as it develops, the water can kind of cushion those big drops in temperature in, in April and May that may have a damaging effect on the crop. And in a lot of ways, a cherry tree is a really delicate tree, you know, and um, but it grows in this soil that is impossible to grow anything else in. And it's an amazing thing that there's this sort of delicate tree that is also really strong and, um, and really resourceful. By 1919, Door County orchards were producing more cherries than it could sell as fresh fruit. The solution was to convert an old pea canning plant into what would then be the world's largest cherry canning plant. Door County cherries became nationally known as growers began shipping their product to markets across the country. Over the next 10 years, Door County cherry orchards would continue to expand, but the Great Depression was threatening to slow that growth. In 1929, orchard owner Carl Reynolds came up with the idea to promote Door County cherries through the creation of a week-long cherry blossom festival, which earned national media coverage. The festival spanned the entire county with parades in each village that would attract thousands of tourists. The cherry industry back in the you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s, at, at some point they were doing such a really good job of marketing um, that they kind of built this um, concept that the cherries were a very colorful, very you know, inviting kind of crop that you could go out and you could pick these cherries, you could see the cherry blossoms. It was, they just did a really great job of marketing. A couple of the top largest orchards in the world were in Door County. And um, so where there was over a thousand acre orchard in Sturgeon Bay in, in the 19, late 1940s. And that took a lot of hand labor to harvest and, and the 1940s were, were probably the heyday where there was over 10,000 acres of Montmorency and early Richmond cherries grown in Door County. The story of Horseshoe Bay Farms uh, begins with the formation of a company, uh, interestingly enough, called United Fruit Growers. They planted a, a, a small amount of orchards, but I think the name United Fruit Growers was more a cover for what their real mission was, which was to create a development. Unfortunately, they were probably a few decades ahead of their time, and um, the development and golf course did not come to fruition. And one of the investors took all of the property. His name was Frank Murphy. He starts by building about nine farm buildings and five farmhouses in about two years. And it was a state-of-the-art farm at the time. And his principal first initiative was to create a Holstein breeding operation, one of the best in the Midwest. And it really got off to a great start, was a money maker for about five years. And then they had an unbelievable tragedy. Um, uh, several of the cows contracted Bangs disease, which is in, which back then, which was about 1925, was incurable. And it spread to about 70% of the herd, and they had to put almost all of the herd down. So they were wiped out. And they had about 100 acres started of orchards up on the bluff. But at this point, um, he had to walk away from the Holstein breeding operation and concentrate exclusively on orchard farming up on the bluff and uh, eventually planted 
uh, over 600 acres of uh, various cherry and apple trees. They became one of the largest fruit producers in Door County and for about two decades were the largest seasonal employer in Door County as well. Harvesting cherries was traditionally a labor-intensive activity. At first, local pickers kept up with the harvest, but as the demand grew, extra help was needed. Orchard owners recruited teenagers and families from across the state to pick, and migrants from Mexico, the Bahamas, and Jamaica brought the total number of orchard laborers to over 10,000 per season. From as far away as Chicago, but certainly from throughout the state, they would gather 100 to 110 uh, kids here. The kids were required to pick seven and a half pails minimum a day for their room and board. Everything above that was cash in their pockets and the kids who really hustled could make up to fifty dollars a week which back in the 40s and 50s when most of this was going on was a lot of money for a teenage kid. How do you attract 110 teenagers every year? Well Frank Murphy and the next owner of the farm, his son-in-law, Dr. Robert Coles, both sat on the board of directors of the Green Bay Packers. And back in the day, the Green Bay Packers didn't make enough money to take them through the year. So Dr. Robert Coles and Frank got a couple of the star Green Bay Packers to come up here and be camp counselors. And that was a huge attraction for these kids over any other option they had up here in Door County. Now this building, was built to house migrants. It was built in 1940. So it was built actually before World War II even started. That's back in the day when we were the biggest cherry producer in the United States. And like I say, with all the cherries having to be picked by hand, it took thousands of them. I'd almost say most of them were Latino families from Texas, Mexico. You got Native Americans, you got young people out of cities. They'd advertise in the papers in Milwaukee and Green Bay. In the 1940s there was a huge shortage of labor in the U.S. because of everyone fighting overseas and at the same time there was a big um, shortage of labor coming from the south which was the normal source of migrant workers uh, north. In 1945 2,000 German prisoners of war came to Door County and pick cherries um, for just one harvest season. U.S. Navy ships that had brought American soldiers over to Europe and on those empty Navy ships they put German prisoners of war, brought them back over to the U.S. and they um, spread them out throughout the U.S. to work on different agricultural projects. Just normal, ordinary guys. They didn't want to be in the military in the first place, captured in North Africa. So now they're here working in Door County, three meals a day, not getting shot at, nice and cool in the evenings, and what more could you ask for? The 1950s and 60s saw a decline in Door County's cherry orchards. Orchards in Michigan were getting larger and more productive. Baking cherry pies became a lost art as women joined the workforce. And the cost of labor rose to the point where hand-picking cherries was no longer profitable. By 1940, we were the largest in the United States up until the 50s. Back when we were the largest here in Door County, they put out maybe 60 or 70 million pounds. Nowadays, I think last year was 13 million. Harvest is, is the big time for us of bringing in everybody to, to do the harvest and, and that's changed a lot in the last hundred years where that was all hand harvest in the 40s and 50s and then mechanical shaker came along in the 1960s. First started shaking just individual limbs and then now we shake the whole tree um, at the trunk or the base and uh, that's much less people than it used to be and much faster much more efficient, and that's a major change from the way it was all done in the 1940s. The timeline of a harvest on a normal harvest day would be our, our machines usually are going out about four in the morning and, and start to harvest. 
Uh, we're right now operating three machines that, that probably are harvesting about a total of 10 trees a minute. And uh, so it takes us, you know, not that long to shake an acre of, of fruit. But that gets transported the, to the processing plant. We've, we try to do that very quickly so that that fruit is, is a limited a time, amount of time from the time it's harvested till it's in the freezer. So it, it will get transported to Egg Harbor to our plant there and it'll be cooled uh, with ice cold water to get that fruit cold enough so that you can run a five star needle through the middle of that cherry without crushing it to remove the pit. And the other things that happen in that facility are uh, laser sorting and to sort out uh, any bruising or issues in the fruit and, and then is packaged in, in whatever packages that our customer is looking for. So that, that process really only takes from the time the tree is harvested till it, it gets to the freezer is really only about six or eight hours. There's been a, a large evolution in the utilization of the fruit from 60 years ago to today. It was in the early days there was a lot more of canning and today juices and dehydrated fruit is a much bigger part of the market today than it than it was. Door County is always known for pie fill and th those kind of products. And now the main products in the cherry industry are dried cherries and juices. Uh, there's been a lot of work done by Michigan University and found out that the health benefits are unbelievable uh, for all ages. And so cherry juice, easily drinkable, dried cherries, carry them along with you, uh, has really opened up avenues for the, the cherry industry. There's still a, a vibrant industry that's here and we're just, we're just happy to be a part of it. Door County is such a name that's recognized and cherries have just been associated with it since those, those early days, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And so when they come up here, they really kind of expect most of them um, to see orchards and to see cherry blossoms and to be able to um, stop at roadside stands and to be able to go into a restaurant and have cherry pies and to have all those products. It's just part of Door County. And it just, it happened over many, many years. And so at this point, trying to hang on to that um, culture of the impact that Cherry has on Door County is really important because I think it brings to people um, an opportunity to experience, you know, some of the past history, but also some of the future. Mm -hmm.